Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is a diagnosis of a 51 inch Samsung Plasma TV. It has lines on the screen and I'm guessing it has something to do with the T-Con board. If we turn it on with the remote, you will see that there are lines on the screen. Always remember to unplug your equipment before working on it. This will avoid a, an electric shock from the nasty capacitors on the power supply and other circuit boards. So these are the panel connectors. These will transmit almost all of the picture signal into the TV. They're very thin ribbon cables and they are susceptible to damage, like lots of dust getting caught in the connectors and possibly even snapping. Going down to the T-Con board, you will see that there are a lot of ribbon cables coming off it. This is where the input board, that green board to the right, outputs all of its video signal through this cable and then this converts it into high voltage, I'm guessing, and low voltage lines, or should I say high voltage and low voltage inputs to the actual panel itself. Now I'd like to remind you this is only for a plasma TV so it will not help you if you have an LCD or CRT TV. While we are in here I'd like to mention these really cool in speaker enclosures inside. They have a little speaker inside of them and they have a port and a plastic cabinet. I think this is pretty cool for a TV. I've seen lots of TVs that just have just speakers with no boxes, so this is pretty cool. To clean the connectors, you will need some contact cleaner, maybe some a few Q-tips, so these will be handy for scrubbing the connectors. And now I don't actually have this, but you might also want to consider using a dust blower, um, like for camera film, to get all the excess dust out of the connectors. Let's take a look at the circuit boards while we're already in here. So there are some large heat sinks to distribute lots of heat from these transistors, which obviously convert um, low, which obviously convert DC to very high frequency AC. Um, we have um, a couple of, let me guess, these are transformers that um, convert it to low voltage. These two transformers are probably for low voltage, let me guess. Um, these two capacitors, and if you're thinking, worrying about my fingers, my hand is actually quite a distance away from these. We have um, a large looking transformer that's probably to power the plasma display. As we can see on the green side there are less coils than on the copper coloured side which has more which um, leads me to believe that this is a high voltage transformer because this is more closer to the output side than this. Lots of other, cir lots of other circuity thinnamer bobs here um, I've only really looked in fire side phone chargers, so I wouldn't really know how much a switch mode power supply works in one of these big TVs. This big panel here looks like a high voltage input or output to the plasma display because these are ribbon cables, but it's just one really big conductor in there. So that leads me to believe that these are actually to put a high voltage in positive or negative voltage into the display. On the left side we have some more circuit boards which looks also like something to do with the power supply. As you can see there are very big heat sinks and also qu some quite large capacitors and thingamabobs here. Um, this is probably the high voltage input I'm guessing. I haven't really looked inside a plasma TV before. And here are the ribbon cables, the ones that actually have in little conductors inside them, probably low current high voltage data inputs as there are like little chips 
inside with like si with silicon on them. Um, maybe this is to protect people from accidentally touching them. Um, high voltage, or maybe they're just very sensitive. Um, down the bottom there, you'll see that there's another circuit board. Maybe this is the low voltage input. I'm not actually 100% sure here, but um, my guess is as good as yours if you've never been inside one of these. F. Going back to the input board, there is, um, um, I just will tell you a bit about this TV. It has antenna in, most TVs do, you know, if you want to see a picture. Um, we have S SPDIF in, um, this one was labelled service, it looks a bit like a headphone jack. This is probably where Apple's been hiding them all. Um, this is green for the RGB, but it also does um, just single cable composite video. And these are the rest of the component audio ins and HDMI. And around the side, there's another HDMI and a USB <coughs> port to like deliver power to your Chromecast or whatever your connect. So you're finished cleaning all the of the connectors. Um, you can go back and plug it back in. Just keep your hands away from the circuit boards if you don't want to be shocked. I would strongly recommend putting on the back panel, but since I am soon getting a part to, for a follow-up of this video, I'm just going to keep it off for uh, convenience sake. Okay, now that we've cleaned up all the connectors, it's time to turn it on again. Now, since I knew that this ha was a problem to do with the T-Con gourd, this should have done nothing in my case. But I hoped it helped you. Um, if we see, we move over to tools, there should just still be a big gaping... Yes, there it is, a big gaping, gaping black um, square in the, there. Um, um, this might have helped you to fix your problem. Mine is obviously the T-Con board. If your if your problem is still here and you're certain that it's the T-Con board, they cost about 20 to 50 Australian dollars on eBay. And that's where we'll, you'll probably find a, either a brand new or refurbished board to put in your TV. Anyway, I hope that helped you and I'll see you in my next video.